season has been brought to you by Radisson Red, Johannesburg, Rosebank. Style you can bank on. Great day, everyone, at Dudley, Durham, North Carolina. I hope everyone is doing absolutely amazing today because I am. It's a beautiful day. As I always say, I'm above ground. So if, if I'm above ground, it's a great day. Miss Charmaine Subramane, how are you doing today? I'm always fabulous, Silhouette. Being in your company is just incredible. And I look forward to our amazing conversations even yeah. though you give me a hard time most days just your energy your spirit and just being with you is just a blessing and multiple anyone levels. anyone that tunes in knows why i give you a hard time because, because you for, love me no because for the longest i thought i was the <laughs> Don't only you one love me yes no but that's not the okay, reason good. why i said you know for the longest i thought i was the only one you know when you think that you're the only boyfriend and you come to find out that there's multiple boyfriends it's a shock to your system so uh, my system's been shocked. You know, my, I would say my hair and my head would stand up, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> you know, Mr. Dudley, my Zulouette, my favorite boyfriend, the world needs more love. Absolutely. And if we can, give, if we can actually spread it in every opportunity we have. So, so there's no real issue in collecting boyfriends or girlfriends, is there? My wife would uh, differ. Um, I was only allowed to have one girlfriend and she made that perfectly clear. And so we're not going to, I'm not spreading any more love anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just take that one. So I'm so blessed to be your favorite girlfriend. Uh, well, go ahead. I have to say, if I may, I feel extra special. Uh, I feel special today because in addition to you, we have another incredible human that we'll be chatting to. And he's doing such phenomenal work on multiple levels. Mm. And uh, yeah, you can introduce him, Mr. Dudley. So I, you know, when I first heard the gentleman's name, I, I literally thought that he was here in the States because it's, it's a very common name in the States. And we were talking um, off camera and he was telling me about where he gets the name derived from and some of the commonalities with the name. If you're here in the States and when, once you hear his name, you're going to know exactly where wow, that name resonates. So, Mr. Andre Young, welcome to the Umbutu house, sir. How are you today? Om Shanti. Good afternoon, Ned. Good afternoon from Cape Town, South Africa. I am very well today. We are in beautiful location, beautiful weather. It is just an absolutely stunning day. Love it. Love it. Mr. Young. Thank you for having me on Connected Ed. I uh, must say that when I saw the name of this podcast, Ubuntu Connected, it resonated immediately with me. Having had a Zulu background in both my grandmothers, Ubuntu has a very special meaning in my neck of the woods. And literally it means, it comes from two words, Ubu and Ntu, Ubuntu, meaning to become your highest potential. Ubu to become and to your highest potential. So if I have the opportunity to become my highest potential just for this interview today and be connected with you, Zulu Ed, it's like I'm coming home. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> I just love that. I mean, the reason we have these conversations to be able to share our journey is to be able to inspire and ignite hope within all people that actually engage with us. So, so, so thank you for that, Andre. Really, really appreciate it. Now, Andre, I would love for you to just tell people who you really are and what you're about. I love the smile. Oh. Okay, so I could I could give you a very long description of who I am. I can give you a short description. Here's the short description. I've been in this body for 54 years. I am not this body. 
I've been around many times around the cycle. But in this cycle, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a cousin, I'm a member of a family that hails from the southern point of Africa, but with connection to family throughout the globe. My grandfather on my paternal side is from India. His original name was changed when he came to this country. His original name was Rajpal. And my maternal grandfather is a Netherlander, a Dutchman by the name of Hans Belanger. So, you know, you're looking at an oak here that is literally got two feet in Africa, one hand in Europe and the other hand in India. I am a citizen of the world. Clearly. Can you, can you repeat what you said your grandfather was? <laughs> so I have two grandfathers. What, I think it was your grandfather. Earth. Okay, the Dutch one. I think it was the Dutch one. The, the Dutch one had a name, Hans de Lange. He uh -huh. was a Netherlander who came to this country and had okay. many wives, many African Zulu wives, Zulu head. And um, <laughs> from one of those wives came, came uh, my mom. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Too funny. Um, um, you know, I consider myself to be a citizen of the world. The DNA I have when it's measured tells me that I have Indian roots, my Dutch roots, but I am an African. Thabo Mbeki, our last president or our previous president, two presidents ago, had that beautiful speech, I am an African. So if I do choose the identity of this body, I am an African. But I think I've also come to a different understanding about Ubuntu, that spiritual identity that has been in culture in our neck of the woods, Africa for millennia. I am this being living to his highest potential. I am this amazing energy in this body that's been here for 54 years in this cycle. I am a, a source of unlimited love. You are. A so about who I am. What else could I tell you? That's the short version. The long version is very, very interesting, but it goes back to 1969 when I was born in KwaZulu-Natal, educated in Johannesburg, which is in a province called Gauteng. I had a short stint in the UK because I was politically not so disciplined in this country during the previous government's reign called apartheid. So I threw stones and petrol bombs and told them exactly how I disagree with their, with their thinking. I returned from the UK and I came back to South Africa in 1990 and um, I've lived here ever since. I saw the dawn of democracy under President Nelson Mandela, who I had the absolute privilege to meet one afternoon, taking a walk after supper. And we have been through a cycle of transformation politically in this country, South Africa, that's created what we call the Rainbow Nation. So that's a little about the background. I live in Cape Town. It's, it's, it's probably as beautiful as South Beach, California. Um, oh, last I was in Santa Monica, I recognized that we have it as good here in Musenberg Surfers Corner in Cape Town. And when I'm driving <laughs> down the road in Camps Bay, I literally think that you know, I have to remind myself and pinch myself, I'm not in California, I'm in Cape Town. <laughs> Well, I, I think it. Cape Town is more beautiful than California. Been experienced, and that's my perspective. And you just confirmed it, right, uh, Andre? Andre, <clears throat> you, I mean, just being human, right? We all go through our dynamics and our challenges and all of that. And my experience with you recently, I told Ed, I met you in January, and I've been quite inspired by your enlightenment and how you're able to keep so much balance and positivity amidst the crisis that happens in our country, around us, and internally. Speak to me a little bit about that, as to how you've managed to get to the stage that you're in, to be able to inspire and help people 
drive the negativity that that in, impacts all of us at times. Ed, I, I came through such crises in the first 30 odd years of my time in this body. And, um, you know, I did what everybody told me to do. I went to school, I got a degree, I went to uh, work and I worked and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I stood up against injustice and I fought and I was dealing with so much chaos, so much anger that by the time I was 33, having had two kids and married, I, I got some very hard news. The thing I loved most, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And that was 20 years ago now, 21 years ago. And that was really hard. I really struggled with that because it was terminal and we were managing a circumstance that would end life. Now I had achieved everything they told me to achieve. I'd made a lot of money. I'd gotten married. I'd bought a house. I did all the things that people had expected me to live up to, but I found myself so unhappy. It ended in a divorce whilst my mom was approaching the end of life. I'd built a successful company that uh, after I sold my stake in that, gave my ex-wife 50% of all of the money that came out of that. And I've asked myself, how come if I'm playing by all the rules, why am I so unhappy? Why am I struggling? And, and I realized something through an absolute chance meeting, much like the chance meeting I had with Charmaine the other day in January. I met an amazing human being by the name of Dipti Naran, and she introduced me to this concept that I am a soul, a source of unlimited love, a light in this body. I am power, soul power in this body. I am pure, I am peace. And that was, that was a very big concept for me because I'd never been taught that before. I'd never had the privilege of that knowledge for the first 33 years of my life. But once I got that understanding, that knowledge, I began to have a new experience, not the experience of chaos and crises, I started having a new experience of my true identity, not the Zulu with Indian and Dutch root, but the being <laughs> on the inside. And that just sent me into a new cycle of love and joy. I buried my mom. I gave my ex-wife half of her money. And very shortly thereafter, she asked me to please become the custodial parent of my two children that I'd had in that marriage. So I literally, from the time after my mom passed, raised my son and daughter. My son's name is Tabang. It's a Sutu name for, it's a pleasure, God's gift, a pleasure. And my daughter is named after me. Her name's Andrea. So, you know, I, I came to this understanding, Charmaine, that I can have an experience amidst what's going on in the world that is peaceful, loving, blissful, Ubuntu connected, literally becoming my highest potential connected to the divine source. And you know, when I saw the name of your show, I went, why, why are you guys wanting to chat to me? Do you want to figure out this Ubuntu connected thing that I experienced? Because yes, that, that, that aha moment was like the lights went on. And I've been living like that for 21 years now, Ed. Charmaine, I kid you not, this is a great life. It's a Hey, Andre, I, I will simply say, because you started saying some things that resonate with me, and I'll just, I'll say this and I'll let Charmaine go on with a question. We are a spiritual being having human experiences. That's all we are. That's it. It's, I mean, you both make a profound statement and, th and thank you for your share, Andre. And 
taking us to your experience because if we all have that mindset, the chaos that's actually happening in the world as a result of our identity to the materialism, that I'm African, I'm British, I'm this, I'm that, it creates a divide that the human, our world doesn't require. And if we can see yourself as the spiritual being just here having a human experience, that divide will no, no longer exist. We'll be able to unify people and just make our experiences more pleasurable on earth, right? That's what we all want. We want inner peace and we want inner joy. And just through Andre's chance meeting and going on this journey has just given it. I mean, I would not have thought the first time I met you, Andre, this year in January, that I thought you were born this way, to be quite honest. <laughs> energy, fire, wanting to serve, wanting to make a difference. Just the, your entire being was just like, like it was, it was amazing actually to just experience that. So only when you unpacked it for me, I got to realize, oh, wow, people can change if there's willingness. People can make a positive impact, just being able to heal themselves and look at the world differently. So you've been an inspiration and you continue to be for me actually, Andre. So thank you for sharing that with me. Andre, what is your most valued asset? You know, I, I've spent a lot of time accumulating assets the way the accountants um, define assets. Mm -hmm. um, some of them define assets as properties. Some of them define assets as cars, stocks in companies. Um, I can go on and on. There's, there's many different... Uh, financial accounting, humanly defined versions of assets. Mm -hmm. But think about it. Because those assets are of the material world, and Ed, you said that a spiritual being having a human experience. Can you imagine if we were spiritual beings having a spiritual experience every day? Because we're spiritual beings, and the human experience is not something that we can say always provides us with the best experience. So if we were spiritual beings having a spiritual experience every hour of every day, and I've been around for 19,740 days in this body. <laughs> Okay. He's talking I mean, I about, count you're talking day. about reincarnation, right? Is that what you're referring to? I've been to? around 19,740 days. That's 54 years and a few days, okay? So I'm beginning to understand what the true value is that I have, the asset is that I have. And because I came to this understanding of my true currency, my currency, how do I spend myself? You know, currency is defined as how do you spend yourself? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The word income, it comes from that English word to come into, to come into. So I came into knowledge. I came into an experience of being a spiritual being. I now have a very different perspective and make meaning of what assets are very differently to the way the world would define an asset. An asset is something that keeps giving. It creates return. It creates income for you. And, 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 and if you understand the English root of the word asset and the now meaning that I take from asset, um shanti, um, I am, shanti, a being of peace. My identity is my true asset. And I've used that awareness of this asset to play the human game, to play the human experience game. And to convert it into assets the way the financial guys define them. Because when I got divorced and I gave half of my assets and money to my first wife. And I spent the other half in no time. I traveled the world. I drank. You know that Eat, Pray, Love movie? That was me. Only I was the guy version. I went Eat, Pray and a lot of other bad things that was not love before I came to this understanding. So I was in France, I was in Italy, I was in the US, I was, I mean, I did horrible things. I was gambling, I was doing all sorts of bad things. And 
I crashed. I crashed. And I was broke financially. I was living on handouts from a very close friend of mine who gave me money for 12 months so I could feed myself and my children. Remember I said I became the custodial parent? But then this awareness came, this um shanti moment came. And I started spending my assets to good effect. And I kid you not, Ian, um, I'm Ed, Charmaine. I started manifesting income. I went from no money to millions of rands and then dollars of income. I converted those millions of rands into houses, cars, shares. And then I discovered something else along the journey with this asset that I have, Charmaine, that I have unlimited love. And this woman came into my life and I married her. Her name is Geraldine. She's my girlfriend. And you know, when I first met Charmaine, she said, I want to be your girlfriend. I said, my wife? I don't think we would agree with that perspective. <laughs> but I've materialized this asset. I've materialized no, darling, correction. I said, hello, boyfriend. And you went like, no, my, boy, my wife wouldn't appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so, Ed, I wasn't. <laughs> Charmaine, no, Charmaine, no, no, you know no, what, eh? Yes, your no, love, no. your love is something that I receive and this asset, it attracts it, it attracts it, you know, and, 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 and my true asset is my identity, who I am, who I am, but, but I have materialized it. I can tell you that this ain't, this ain't some spiritual thing where I sit in the mountains every day meditating. I live in the real world. I deal in the world of banking. I deal in the world of insurance. I deal in the world of government. I'm dealing in the world of, and I kid you not. Assets properly invested create a return. But I want to come back to this properly invested spiritual asset that I've, 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 I've come to the awareness of. I've come to the response to the world of. And Charmaine says, Andre, I like your energy. Well, that's my energy. That's my asset in play. My asset is something I transact every day. And I wanted to say this on your... Ubuntu connected. If the world just traded their true asset, wow, what a world we would create. Powerfully stated, actually. And I mean, to be of service is to just be you in a positive way and land that joy, peace, and demonstrate and be a leader and demonstrate how it gets, how it should get done, actually. You don't have to be doing anything. You just have to be yourself. I mean, that's my perception on, on how we should navigate this world. Because if every, every single one of us, just be us, not compete with anybody, just focus on what our limitations are and how we could better that, we'd be able to be supreme beings on multiple levels, making a difference to everybody else. Andre, you do it daily. And I know Ed does it. That's why I've gravitated towards him, because I have this tendency to gravitate to beautiful souls and that's the way i see you both um doing good so yeah so ed what is yeah. your asset ed? what is my I'm asset curious. yeah um my whole being you know andre you know so much of what you're saying was resonating with me um i was on a path i was just trying to climb that corporate ladder you know what kind of titles can i get behind my name and how much assets, you know, the house, the cars, and be able to travel and all that. And I went through a journey. I went through a journey where I, you know, that was all put to the side. And I realized that my true asset isn't all the stuff. Like I used to love watches, watches and pens. That was my thing, watches and pens. I had all types of pens. And it got to a point I was like, I don't care. It does, that does, that does not matter. I can't, we can't take it with us. And I love the story of Alexander the Great. And if you haven't, you don't know the story of Alexander the Great when he was dying, you need to look it up, anyone that's listening to it, because he was one of the wealthiest men in the world. And listen to what he said as he was writing out his obituary to be performed. Uh, but I am my asset, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit. Andre, but I have a question for you, sir. And I want to break it down into two halves. So you have 
pre-umshante and umshante. But right there in the middle is when you got the revelation. What was that like for you? Wow, what an insightful question. No, it, it, when I was a kid, they orientated me into a practice called Catholicism. It was a religious practice that I was raised in, you know, so we would make the sign of the cross, you know, this is pre Om Shanti, you know, and we would kiss the cross and we'd kiss Mary and we'd do all these customs and rituals which, which were the, shall we call it the, the conformance to which I had come. Okay. And I hit this Om Shanti moment and you must know the catalyst was my mom leaving her body. So, you know, this woman's got cancer. I've got 18 months of watching her body decay, her body decay. And I've had 33 years of her being such a loving being. And, you know, Ed, she'd been to the hospitals. We'd got all the care. She'd been to a hospice. And then she said, take me home. Take me home. And I took her home. And we cared for her at home. And as she was leaving her body, I was there crying, you know, the crisis, the, 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 the emotion that was flying in that moment. And she said something so amazing. She said, I love you, my children. I love you, my children. I have a younger brother. He's five years younger than I am. And that's what she said to us. And I watched her. In her last breath, give me that, that gift. And I saw this light in her, the shine in her. And it hit me. It hit me. Because when I was a young kid, as a, as a Catholic, we used to sing this song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now, I sang that song without any consciousness of what the hell it meant. And here's my mother, this thing that gave me unlimited love, telling me in her last breath, I love you, my children. You know, I didn't. My brother said it was my coming to Jesus moment because Jesus declared he loved the world so much. But I didn't experience that being a Catholic. I experienced that when my mother left. And that, 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 that light that was shining at me is what unleashed the post-Um Shanti era. Because now I knew. But I was seeking the understanding of what I know. You know, because you can know something, but you don't understand it. You can know something, but not have the skill to do it. You can know something. Knowledge is a beautiful thing, but you don't have the attitude from which you bring that skill to bear that knowledge into the world. You can know something, but not live the talent of it. So the task, the talent, the attitude, the skill, the knowledge had to come together in the post Om Shanti era where I was tasked, and I use that acronym tasked, Task, talent, attitude, skill, knowledge, to shine, to shine this light, to make manifest the glory of God that is within me. Marianne Williamson, A Return to Love. That poem comes to mind as you ask me what was in the post of Shanti event. And then this amazing organization called the Brahma Kumari World Spiritual University. Now, I've been to university my whole life. You know, I've been at school the catholics put mathematics and english into me i went to the university of Vardas front i studied computer science and mathematics and physics and chemistry and now at my mother's death i get this Wah! now i'm studying what does it mean to be a soul what does it mean to spend time in silence what does it mean to take study every day i took study this morning at six to seven i had my class and what does it mean to then, after I've had my class from six to seven every day, spend time in service, serving the world. So the algorithm is simple. The post Om Shanti era is a soul who spends time in silence, who takes daily study, 
and who lives in service of what's around me. This morning I was at a hospital, yeah? I went to fetch my wife's dad. His name is Gerald Russell. He turned 75 years old later this year. He's got stage 4 cancer with metastasis in his brain, meaning the lesions in his brain are bleeding. We took him home. I went home again today with another person I love. And I come here to you, Ubuntu Connect, I'm coming home. We're all coming home all the time. Eh? And the post Um Shanti era is defined by this coming home. So the crisis doesn't end in this human experience. because dad's got stage four cancer. I was telling Charmaine yesterday, hey, man, there's a lot of emotion flying at the moment. She said, OK, maybe we can postpone the interview and you can do this another time. I said, no, no, let's do this. Guess why? Because the crisis is constant. We live in a polycrisis. We live in this world of multiple crises simultaneously. We're even seeing that it's possible, and I shared this concept with, with, with Charmaine, that it's a perma crisis, you know, that the m multiple crises are becoming permanent. So how you navigate that, how you play, how, do you have a garment to take you through the perma crisis and poly crises? My Om Shanti moment, I have a garment, I have a navigation system to take me through and keep me in my original form. Mr. Young. So I'm very excited, but I offer you this piece. You know it. It's, it's in you. It's in Charmaine. It's in all of us. It's precisely this, though. I mean, I didn't share with Ed the, the fact that your father-in-law has just come out and is being home cared for. And, you know, it's in his last days. Um, that you, you're able to just continue being you and just pouring goodness into the world. I, I just want a clarification question. Mom passed. There were a, there was a break before the Om Shanti. I mean, there was a, there was a connection point, but there was a break between the finding of that spiritual journey, right? After your travel or was it be within your travels? I'm just so trying to understand. Line, right? I get a divorce. Yeah. yeah. I spend it to disaster. Now, how, how many years? What period of time was that? Took about 18 months now. 18 months. Okay. And, and, then, and then somebody says to me, you know this power that is in you? Go meet these people. Because they'd seen me behaving like a really bad guy. You know, I was drinking 18-year-old single malt scotch. I was smoking cigars. I was gambling. I mean, and I, I kind of love the high life, you know, much like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, you know? <laughs> And somebody said to me, there's this power in you that we see. Just go meet this lady, Dipti, and let her tell you about it. And I, and I come to this moment. And, but I've been searching. I knew it. I knew it at the time mom left. But I was fighting this, this truth. I didn't want to make sense of the truth. And then as I made sense of it, I went to this place. It's a place out here in Johannesburg called the Brahma Kumari World Spiritual University. And it's one of the centers. If there are and centers throughout the world, 1,000 1, centers across the globe in 167 countries. There's a, I'm yet to find a country where I don't find a university branch of the Brahma Kumari. And Andre, it's not a religious place. It's just a spiritual place where everybody amalgamates, irrespective of what religion you are. Yeah, I think... Charmaine, the, the, the religious thing, I was fighting that. I went, how can, how can Jesus take my mother from me? I mean, you're, you're a bad guy, Jesus. You took what I love. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I was fighting religion. And when I went to the Brahma Kumari and they started talking to me about my true identity and they were in, revol revealing to me what my true asset is, Hang on a second. I said, but hang on, that was mom's asset. Mom was the source of unlimited love. This is truth. I, I know this. this. This truth was so clear to me. And it, it was no more a, 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 a Jesus moment. It was a, I studied physics at university. I wanted the science of this thing. I wanted to see science, not religion. I wanted to see proven. I ain't taking anything that ain't got no proof. Because I'm like that. I'm... I'm, I'm I'm a very, very intuitive, curious, seeking, sense-making type of person. The brain works like that. And when I came to this understanding of I am a soul, a source of unlimited light, 
a, 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 a source of unlimited love. And I spend time in silence. And I just got to slow the brain down here. Because I think very quickly. Eh? I'm a mathematician. I, I can calculate calculus like that. I'm a computer scientist. I, I played these different roles. You know what I'm saying? And I went, oh, so actually I am this thing on the inside that's driving all these different roles. But the silence, the silence almost was a coming to my genius moment. Spiritually and intellectually and emotionally. I, absolutely. I, I kind of support the notion of what you're sharing, the idea of sitting in silence because my greatest moments of creativity or stillness or peace is when you're sitting and it's not about religion actually it's just finding time and i think ed you've also mentioned it meditation is what you do every morning and the ability to still one's mind is able to to cultivate and grow that inner peace because if you have inner peace you're not in competition with anybody let's be honest andre you know what i'm saying you know your lane, you know who you are. And by just being you and not being in competition or wanting to live in the biggest house or drive the fanciest car or go on all the international holidays, you are just, what can I say? Just being yourself, calming your mind, calming your being and being able to be of service because it's not about the materialism. It's about that. And that's why you can sit here, have this conversation with us, although there's there's a bit of a crisis happening at home right now, but you don't bring that energy. You bring that Andre, like, I'm here to shine. I'm here to give love. I'm here to inspire and I'm here to land my message that's going to help just maybe one person or multiple people on what needs to happen to go through that journey of transformation. Yeah. So, so Andre, <clears throat> I love how you, you talked about sitting in the silence. It's one of the biggest problems for so many people. We can't sit in silence. Because when we sit, that, that mind starts moving all over the place. Just And they're thinking about all types of things. They either think about what happened in the past or what's happening in the future and not sitting in the moment. So the very first time that you sat in silence, what was that like for you? Because I know so, I've talked to some people that struggled with it. and said, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it more than a couple of seconds. But what was it like for you sitting in the silence for the very first time? You know, Ed, I struggled. But I learned one thing in life as a constant reminder. When you've got the right help, struggles disappear. You get over it easy. <laughs> so I had this amazing help. I had this human being by the name of Dipti Narad. And then she introduced me to Daddy Junkie. And then she introduced me to Genti. Then she introduced me at I had all these angels helping me. And Ed, in the first few experiences of silence, I would struggle, I would struggle to silence the of the mind, you know? But then I had all these amazing spiritual partners around me, meditating with me, slowing it down for me, helping me with their collective vibration to go from da, 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 to da. And that collective got me into the practice and into the habit and into the skill and the attitude of not five minutes, but 10, 15. I had an hour of meditation before you guys. Today, I came back from the hospital. I sat in silence. That's my silence wall there. And then I came to this because I said to myself, I must bring with me the collective intelligence of all beings, souls that are here and that are in the soul world. And I kid you not, I sit here flowing, not what I think only, but what the collective thinks. And that, that collective harmony that collective vibration of peace. I've had it with Charmaine at the call of the time dialogue in January. And I was talking to you before I got here today on this stream yard. I was saying, Ed, I'm calling you. 
And you know, when I got into the call, pre coming into the, the live thing, you said, I know the name Andre Young. And I went, ah, he heard me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're amazing. <laughs> no, but, but the ability to manifest. You, you know, the ability to still your mind and manifest. Because sometimes you go, oh, I just need to do X, Y, Z, whatever. And you're out and about and you bump into them. That's how you met uh, Tata Mandela, right? It, it was those. And it, and it often happens. It's like I'll think of somebody and then like I bump into them. Like, so so the point I'm making or, or whatever, that stillness, that meditation, whatever, will actually help on multiple levels. So, Andre, besides being this spiritual being that's actually helped you navigate spaces, I want to for you to actually share some of the other work that you actually do. I think there's power in what you're doing on multiple levels. So, yeah, just take the time to walk us through it. You know, that transformative moment for me mm -hmm. that you talked of, Ian, Pre um shanti, post um shanti. Who the hell is Ian Andre Young? No, Ed, Ed, sorry, Ed. <laughs> is, 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 is. It's your middle name, Ian, Ed, that I don't know well, about. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of this transformation and I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> concentrating. That transformative moment has become something I want to share with the world because it happens to us in different ways. I mean, I've read many books. Um, Seat of the Soul, um, Gary Zukov, um, is something I highly recommend to people if they haven't read it. Or a simple book um, by Daddy Junkie, um, Inside Out. Um, I, I can give you a whole list of books. But, we'll but, put but, it in but, the commentary section, okay? But the work, the work that I want to do now and have, want, and have been doing since 33 years old is sharing that. So I find myself getting pulled into different opportunities to make that contribution, to be of service in that way. And the one I'm involved in now that has me very excited is a program by the South African Human Rights Commission called SHINE. Literally, they've come up with this name SHINE. And it's called the Social Harmony National Effort. And put the I into the Social Harmony national effort and you put i into shine s-h-i-n-e i into s-h and the n-e and all of a sudden you go shine so, so so that's one of the programs we're involved in and a very intelligent group of people at the south african human rights commission gave me this presentation when i met charmaine up in Joburg, and i went i want to do that i want to help bring harmony to 60 million people on this part of the world hey let's do it for the rest of the world but that's an example of one of the projects I find myself drawn to, Charmaine. Another project I find myself drawn to. You know, Ed, a, a very good friend of mine lives out um, in your neck of the woods. Um, she works for Citizens Bank. It's a bank in, uh, in, in, on, the, on, the, on the west coast, east coast of the U.S. And she had me do a talk to her group there the other day because these bankers all want to come to this Om Shanti transformation moment. So we had a chat about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I find myself um, being called by many people to share this weird idea that you should shine in different formats. I, I sent Charmaine uh, an interview I had with a radio station a couple of weeks ago. I get this call in the morning. It's 8.15. Listen, Matt, we want you on the radio at 10 o'clock. What do you want? We want you to tell people about how social media ain't helping them. And so I said, okay, what do you want me to say? They said, just tell them how you shine. And I went, oh, there we go. And so, so, so I contributed there. So I do the stuff because I want to give back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I do some real dollar creating revenue income work. Okay. Where we are trying to take a hundred people from South Africa into the Dutch situation because of the huge skill and unemployment and an employment crisis they're having there. They don't have enough people to do the work there, Ed. We have an abundance of people unemployed here. And I'm going, okay, you need them, we have them. Flip. Let's do this edu tourism employment gig. And all of a sudden we want to take a hundred people and let them go and serve others in the Netherlands. I've been doing this for a number of years now. I did this, hey, before my Amashanti moment, we sent 
we sent 50 people there and we taught them to become computer programmers and they ended up being trained there, came coming back here. We were doing work from home 30 years ago. So, so, so I, I find myself involved in many different opportunities, business endeavors, where we're rewriting the business model. We're rewriting the script of how we go about operating the world. But, but I didn't come here to talk about my business and business transformation design, the business I run, mm -hmm. because the dollar stuff is easy. I, I think if you actually understand the economics of the world, we have trillions of dollars in circulation. There is an absolute abundance of money. Money is not an issue. Doing good. Now there, that's the conversation we have to have about how do we do good so we can get these trillions and trillions of dollars that are in circulation energizing, being the fuel for that doing good. Because I think we do have a circumstance at the moment where trillions of dollars are fueling the not doing good. Andre, you know, you, you talked about the Shine Project, you talked about your light, but you started out, remember, singing this song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine. That's literally your theme song. And you probably didn't even realize it when the song was being sung many, many years ago. Because I remember my grandmother singing that song in church years ago when I was a little kid. But you're doing that right now. You're letting your light shine in many different areas. So thank you for that, because we need more people letting their light shine. Um, and Charmaine knows that my wife and I run an organization called Shining Light in Darkness. It's all about shining a light on those victims and survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. If we had more people that would let their light shine, because let's just be honest, our society is a dark place. But when I said we are spiritual beings having a human experience, those spiritual beings emit light. And if we would admit our light more in this society, we wouldn't deal with a lot of the problems that we have. We wouldn't worry about, you know, who's not working, who's not eating. Because we would be shining our light and making sure that, oh, you know what? Here, I have more than enough. Come to my table. Oh, you need a ride? Come on, hop in my car. Or matter of fact, I got five cars. You need a car? Here's a car. We need more people letting their light shine in society. So thank you for letting your light shine. You're going to have me singing that song all day long now. And, and and thinking about my grandmother at the same time. <laughs> you see, he's creating a connection. You know, Ed, as you both speak of light and shine, I mean, it was Andre that reminded me when we were given an opportunity to just introduce ourselves and what our purpose is in the world. And my thing was like, I want to be a catalyst for change. And wherever I go, I want to spread my love and my light. I think you reminded me that I didn't even realize I said it. So this commonality on what our intention is, and maybe that's why, we connect as beautifully as we do. You know, Andre, I was grappling on multiple levels with the crisis we find ourselves in. And there was a segment that was actually shared at the call of the time dialogue um, that we were lucky, I mean, I felt blessed to be invited to, that spoke about the different phases of life and that it, it kind of gave me context and made reason of why we are in the crisis at the moment. Do you want to just unpack that a little bit for for us. I think there's so much value in that share, especially when one is battling with inner peace and the dynamics around us. Happy to. Do you know what I'm talking? Okay, cool. Thank yes, you. Yes, happy to. Um, you know, Charmaine, um, the dialogue we had, which shared what they called the cycle of time. I had it mm -hmm. last week. Literally. No, 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 no. It was this week. Today's Friday. It was on Tuesday. I was in the dialogue session with a couple of friends of mine from around the world here and that uh, and we were talking about what is personal time what is the management and leadership of time now you know it's interesting we've built the world measure of time based on the solar system how many times you go around the sun how many times the earth goes around the moon or the moon goes around the earth. And, you know, we, we've built the measure of time based on the solar system. Mm -hmm. 
So measuring time is, it depends on which measure you're using. And, and, and what Chantal's asked, so Charmaine's asking me to talk about is Ian, what Chantal. measure of time, what measure of time did we learn? You know, I learned this when I went to the Brahma Kumari. The measure of time can be different for different people. And you see it in, 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 in the UK, they do what they call daylight saving hours. They adjust the clock. So if we could just adjust our clock and measure time in the cycles that it runs, and the Brahma Kumari taught me this concept of how about we measure time in cycles of 5,000 years? And that measure of time has time broken down into one, the first sort of 1,250, then the second 1,250, third and fourth. It's called the golden age, the silver age, the copper age, and the iron age. And they bring a, 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 a metallic measure of time. They use that metallic measure of time. And what you find is that you go from gold to silver. Because the world went through a process of decay of matter. There used to be a time where the world was just pure. Matter was pure. Nothing died. Everything lived. And they went into the Silver Age where people started losing that purity, that, that consciousness of who they truly are, their true nature, the expression of their true self. They, they started to take on degrees of impurity where that great joy that was in the world was just a few degrees less than in the Golden Age. And then the Silver Age heads into the Copper Age. And in this phase, we get a, a more accelerated decline in the consciousness of man and of the world and of souls, these original truths of who we are. And the Copper Age lasts another 1,250 years. And, and there's a lot of change happening rapidly, as you see in the world today. You know, we live in this party crisis where everything is changing. And the Silver Age goes into the Copper Age, and now we live in what they measure time as, as the Iron Age. We've been living for thousands of, 1,250 odd years in an Iron Age where there is such rapid decline of matter and purity of matter that we're seeing what we see now. I can make sense of the world now, Ed, because I can see we're in the Iron Age. But you know, as you move from one age to the next, from the gold to the silver, the silver to the copper, the copper to the iron age, there's a confluence. There's this coming together of these two times. And we now live in that time, that confluence of moving out of the iron age back into the golden age. We call that confluence of time the diamond age. Shining light. Many souls are waking up and becoming diamonds and shining. So we're literally at that confluence between the Iron Age back to the Golden Age. And we are going to see in the cycle, through the power of connection with the divine, more shine, more shine, more harmony, more purity. And I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it because Ubuntu Connected has got a podcast. You guys are doing it. And I never knew you guys. And now I'm seeing it. More people are coming to this conversation. And Charmaine asked me in the pre-show, um, 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 Google for, who would I recommend to come and talk? And he hit me immediately. Bring that guy. That guy will tell them some more. But we're waking up. Humanity is waking up. The social harmony national effort must become a social harmony global effort. Because you know, Andre, eight billion of us wake up and shine in this diamond age, this confluence age. We're going to make the world a beautiful place again, in matter, not just in spirituality. I love the share that you've just shared from taking us through the different phases. I am not a pessimist, you know it. But I am feeling where I am right now, and I think I shared it with you, that it seems to me that we're stuck in the Iron Age, that entire form of decay. Oh, yes, there are a few individuals, 
that are coming together to shine their light, to demonstrate and ignite hope and possibilities and get more people to see good and love themselves to be able to give out love, kindness, hope, peace, and all of those beautiful things. I feel, and we have to call it for what it is, especially where we're here in South Africa, but I don't think it's just South Africa, Ed. It's a global issue. I mean, if you look at the wars, you look at the poverty, you look at the, the, the rate of unemployment, you look at the, the self-serving agendas that are out there. I mean, if every single person, I mean, I know Andre, I, I, I can, I'm testament to the joy and on daily inspiration that he puts out and he does his bloody damnedest to get people to step into their power and just sort of, you know, take control back, right? Um, to pour goodness into the world. Um, you have to, you have to acknowledge, or oh, Andre, I'm asking you, do you honestly believe we're in the confluence or rather we are in the decay, the iron ore stage? Because that's what I'm seeing, like the hate, the, the violence, the killing, the robberies, the people starving. Like my qu question to you, and you, you're the scientist and the computer and the physician, so give me your accuracy. How many more years does that have to happen before we can see the golden age coming into being? Well, we're in the cycle. I know it's a tough question, right? But we're, I just we're want in the you cycle to give of me some... iron turning, confluencing back into. Yeah. Gold. Yeah. And but like, it, is to there say a time that it's going to happen in one lifetime would be a no. fallacy. It's not going to happen in one okay. lifetime. My, I'm talking about my lifetime now. But I keep. Our you lifetime, we're about you know, the same I, age. I right? this life, Ian. And I came and... to Cape Town in 20, 20, 2018 and I, I launched a hashtag called Jadip. Just another day in paradise. I love that. And I do it with a colleague of mine who lives in Hawaii, Ryan McGuinness. And he also has Jadip. And he shared the logo with me and I've been sharing it here. And you know how many people ask me, how do you do Jadip? I want to do that too. To answer your question, Charmaine. People are drawn to it. Yeah. No, people I are drawn to the Brahma Kumari. When I called my colleague that I gave Charmaine's name of, I said, hey, I have a friend. Her name is Charmaine. She... And Ed run this thing called Connected, Ubuntu Connected. Would you do that? He said, if the time fits my diary, I'll do it. The more you send the invitation to Jadip, to Shine, to Ubuntu Connected, the more people are going to show up. I think it's our job to give the invitation. And I think it'll take a few lifetimes. But when I look at the data, because I'm a data scientist, okay? Prosperity index.com the world is shifting towards prosperity and you remember we went to a conference it was called generating prosperity mm. besides what we're seeing in the media because the media sells that iron age in a big way i wish the media would sell the prosperity that's actually happening in the world i wish it would shine light on what ed's doing with his wife i wish we would shine light on what charmaine's doing in the music industry in south africa i wish we would shine light on the social harmony national effort and invite people to judge up invite them to shine invite them to whatever you want to call it because the invitation to purity i kid you not when i offer it 999 out of 1000 accept and it takes a while it doesn't happen over two weeks or six months it took me 18 months but the more we give the invitation, the more we make this the conversation. I kid it's you not, Charmaine, we can accelerate this. And the I 8 billion you. number that we got to recently confirms one thing. People are waking up. People want to give up anger, lust, greed, attachment, ego. And they want to do light and love and peace and purity and, 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 and divine connection and happiness and joy and benevolence and, and kindness. They want to do it. You just got to say Come over here, yeah, mate. We're doing that. <laughs> I love your call to action because you are right. The media is not covering. I mean, me, it seems to me because that people just gravitate towards the darkness. We've been programmed. The, dark, the darkness is being shared and people tend to gravitate. So when you are spreading light and kindness and hope and things, there's, yeah, your point is taken and more of us need to do that. Thank you for call. I mean, your call to action. People need to do more of this. I mean, it does. I mean, our intention is 
to spread more light. And that's why we are having this conversation. And, and, you know, and we will inspire at least one or two people to come on board and to make a difference. The guy he's talking about, uh, my Zuluet, is, is, has been recently appointed to, <laughs> to chair our ESCOM, you know, the light issues that I constantly have that I've been complaining about. So it would be really joyful to get him on to just see where he's going to take us to in our next phase. Okay. Um, as we said, we not every we don't guarantee bringing on everybody, but I think it'll be useful to actually have a conversation with them. All right. Yeah, he literally has the job to turn the lights on for South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> just playing on the pun, light, light, shine. You know, it's it's just been this this magical energy of flow. Andre, you know, like inner peace is is such a beautiful thing, right? that my wishes for every single human on this earth to be able to have that. Because when you have inner peace, I mean, nothing is a challenge in the world because you can navigate through all of that. Speak to us a little bit about more, more about that. And how did you get to the stage of detachment? So I think, um, you know, we take for granted yeah. all the privilege we have. You know, I, I, I find it amazing. You know, I have four children, two which I had in my first marriage, two which I acquired in my second marriage, and I've raised these people to adulthood. And they, they've been raised with privilege. They didn't grow up with, with hardship like I did. And I remind them that their family is their privilege. They have a dad. I never had a dad. It, my dad quit us when I was five years old, after my brother was born. So I remind my son he's got the privilege of his dad and his mom and a second mom, my, my, my wife now. And his mom got married and I said, look, you've got a second dad now. But family is such a privilege. Another simple thing that you don't need to spend money on to be aware of your privilege is you have physical abilities. Yes, some people are physically disabled, but even the physically disabled have got abilities. Those abilities are privilege. And I can, I can slice the privilege onion for you and show you the multiple layers of privilege we all have, the source of privilege we have. And I kid you not, time, if you're alive, you're privileged. If you have health, you have privilege. If you have family, you have privilege. If you've got access to somebody to show you and teach you knowledge and education, you have privilege. And yes, some education comes with money, but a lot of it comes. Love is taught for free everywhere. And if you don't know where to go to find love for free, check out the Brahma Kumari World Spiritual University. They're in every city in the US. You'll get a free class in love. Knowledge is free. It is a privilege. And yes, money is a privilege. Money is a privilege. And you have to, you have to come into your light to have income so that you can play with the dollars. Mm -hmm. so, so I think to answer your question, become aware of your privilege and how you might spend this privilege, this thing you have at no cost to good, to do good, to be good, because God is good. You know, people say to me, <laughs> How do you know there's a God? I say, I'm good. You're good. There's God. God is good. That's pretty simple. There's an answer you, Charmaine. We, we, we must understand that this privilege we have, irrespective of what our means are, are the sources of prosperity that we must use to, to move the prosperity index of the world up. And prosperityindex.com is literally a website where they measure the prosperity of the world. South Africa's ranked 75. Denmark's ranked in the top. We must move the world to prosperity by spending our privilege, not spending our dark. That, I think, is the key to how we're going to shift the world. From privilege, everybody, 8 billion of us privileged, generating prosperity. You know, you, you, you said so much, and I was sitting here smiling because you started talking about detachment. So I run a men's group. 
um, for for men. And literally, I have a post sitting that I wrote about detaching yourself from all the material things. So that's why I was sitting here smiling so big. Now, one of the things you talked about, God is good. So over here in the States, in the black church, you know, you say God is good. And then the response is all the time. And then they say all the time, God is good. So there's there's a little American American church for you. <laughs> I knew you guys are going to connect somehow. This has been phenomenal. This is, right? Yeah, this is this has been very informative um, for me. I learned a lot. Um, love your energy. Absolutely love your love your energy. And yes, you are radiating a light. Um, you're letting your light shine. Um, and, and as we get to the tail end, you know, I always ask a question, you know, if you're speaking to a crowd and, and things like that, what would you say? Uh, but mine is going to be a little more narrow. There's a lot of men across the globe that are running around with no inner peace. You know, we might have all the material things and all the things that life has to offer, um, but there's no inner peace. What would you say to that man that is struggling on the inside? Um, how to begin to find that inner peace? I'm going to tell you what I came to. I was invited to my true identity by a woman. The Shiv Shakti army of Brahma Kumari sisters, Tipti Naran, Jenti, Didi. I can go on, I can give you a whole list of names. But I joined my spiritual family who kept reminding me who I am. And Ed, there was violence in me. There was violence in me. I no longer. Let the vices, which is the root of violence, come out. I now let the virtue come out. And in that virtue is that peace, that love, that joy, that divine connection. So brother, brother, I invite you for free to this community of souls that have identified their true identity. Come join us, man. <laughs> Oh, Andre, that was beautifully stated. And Ed, you're already creating that community mm -hmm. where people can come in and share and just embrace the virtues of yeah. what the world needs more of. And Andre, I love you. I know your golf, your wife's going to kill me, but I told you this the first time I met you. Um, <laughs> grateful for your share. Grateful for the insights. I mean, it was just by, by chance, though. I mean we got to connect at this at this event that was very selective as to who was chosen um to attend so i feel blessed to the brahma kumaris and the other three hosts there were two three hosts right having met you uh your energy and what you continue to do you are truly an inspiration and a joy in my view that to everybody that knows you love and light you and ed thank you for being on this journey with me and i'm so blessed thank to you be with both of you love and light Good day. You, take care everybody oh, be blessed thank you.